I, I just ask the court that. Um, the irony of, I assume that Billy. Well, we're not running Alabama's offense. Well, but they, just they, so you know. I know that. I know that. We're, we're running our offense. Yeah, yeah, they've done some, some, but we've been, uh, we've, we've, we've done the no huddle a little, little, little while. Right. I've been doing it since '06, and uh, yeah, we're a blend of uh, of a lot of people. But uh, main thing is we adapt to our guys. But no, we we watched, uh, you know, our guys watch. We watch. You know, one of the things I believe to be the best, you should watch the best. So we watch like whatever position. So if you're a rush. Linebacker, defensive end. You know, uh, you, you know, you you, you you watch the best in the NFL, which we we'll watch five clips of it every day. So, so uh, uh, mostly our guys are, you know, our system. We're a spread, no huddle, eleven personnel, run, play, action, pass team, just like we were in two thousand and seven. Right. You know, uh, but it's unique to the players that we have here, and we've got we've got some some good players to get the ball to. So. What, what would be uh, I'll tell you what was interesting, uh, you know, if there's anything that I'm proud of, you know, I think I've done a pretty good job of hiring people. Uh, you look at the amount of guys, they have seven guys that have former assistants that have been major Division One head coaches. I've only been a head coach going my 12th year, so, so uh, and we've hired a lot of other guys that are coordinators at Notre Dame and, uh, you know, all over, in SEC, everywhere else. But, um, so when I, when I went about that process, I, one, I want to hire a great person. And I want to have someone that I'm not. I'm not convinced. I'm not one of these guys to go hire some scheme guy, and hey, he gonna run whatever he wants to. Nope, that's not. I've been through Major Applewhite, Gus Malzahn, Chad Morris, Mike Norvell. Been through all of them. We've run the same system because it's a system that I believe in. You have to run the football. You have to be a run, play, action, pass team. And we're a spread. We're a tempo team. Uh, and and you know, and that's all about snaps. And we have a philosophy for that. But uh, uh, you know, uh, I really I think that. Uh, yeah, you know, the thing that I'm, when I was interviewing Billy and hiring him, I mean, I interviewed head coaches, guys that are former head coaches, NFL coordinators, I mean, guys with unbelievable, but one, he, he, he you know, it was his background, he's a coach's kid. You know, his, he, he's a value guy, he's a character guy. He's a, one, I want to hire good men. And then, you know, I want to be able to, and really, I, I remember meeting with him at the, uh, at the you know, at the, uh, uh, the hotel right there, the, the Radisson downtown, the Marble Building, uh, in Dallas, and when I really went in to meet with him, there was really guys that were higher up, so-called, on the list. That's why you don't. That doesn't matter to me. I ain't trying to win the press conference. I'm trying to get the best fit for us. And so, uh, it was his character. It was his background. Uh, the fact that he played quarterback was very, very successful at Furman doing that. The fact that he had studied under McElwain, that uh, uh, that, that I think is one of the best developers of quarterbacks. Uh, and then look who he's coached with. I mean, you know, he's been with some, you know, Dabo Sweeney is Dabo's first offensive coordinator and uh, Jimbo Fisher, Nick Saban. I mean, uh, Jim McElwain at, uh, uh, when he was at Colorado State. So it was really just sitting there and saying, man, this guy and I have a lot of similar uh, beliefs and how we do things. And because I don't want to try to convince somebody what we're doing because, uh, you know, we're not going to change what we're doing. That'd be, that'd be really, because hey, coach, you got to have a plan. And the plan can't be just totally start over every other year, you know, because you're going to have turnover in staff. You win, they get head coaching jobs. Uh, you know, we last year we had when our, our co-offensive coordinator got the Nevada head coaching job. And, you, you know, that sort of change is kind of part of it. So you have to believe, and here's what we believe in offensively. So the fact that we were very similar philosophically, and I was just so impressed with his ability as a teacher. And we spent, I don't know, probably four hours just talking ball and really fundamental progression of quarterbacks and how to teach. And, and then the fact that you can just be around him, man, I, he's a guy that's been around a lot of winners. What were you doing at 29? I was, uh, at 29, I was coaching the uh, NAIA National Champions uh, at East Central University as a defense coordinator. Uh, I would say that he's, uh, he was a lot farther along than I was. I wish I, I wish I was had, had had the experiences that he had, you know. But I, uh, I was coaching high school ball, and then I went back to my alma mater, and I, I, it was one of the best times of my life. But no, I was I was calling defenses at the NAIA, won a national championship that year. Let's say, you know, what, what are the uh, hiring process of Rock Sales? You haven't had a hiring offensive line coach. Yeah, well, obviously, you know, because we, you know, Chris was, was such a special uh, coach in person to me. Uh, but Rob was a guy when when, we, when when Chris left. You know that's one of the things we wanted to really focus on someone. Uh, 
that from a profile standpoint, I wanted someone to really had some some energy and some edge and trying to prove upon you know even what we had. And I thought we had a great teacher in Chris, uh, but we I wanted a guy that really fit you know the blue collar, uh, hardcore discipline, uh, and you know a guy that you, know, you look at his background, you know uh, you know being a player at L LSU, you look at his size, undersized guy starting at LSU for two or three years, and then uh, obviously his background being in good programs and a great teacher. I was so impressed at McNeese State, how well they ran the football when they would play Auburn and people like that. I was very, very impressed with that. And then obviously his relationship with Billy is the number one reason why, why we brought him here because uh, I wanted, uh, with that opportunity, I wanted to get somebody that, that, that Billy was really, really comfortable with. Uh, but on the same hand, they had to fit what, what the profile for what we were wanting. And uh, I've been very, very impressed with, 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 with him and his demeanor and his ability as a teacher. I like that. That's our whole deal. You, I'm not going to try to convince somebody of the teacher deal. It's not, you know, we're, we're going to teach and develop, and, and uh, we believe in the teaching model. So, uh, and also, I mean, I, I like, you can be around Rob for five seconds, and he's got a little edge about him, and he's got a toughness about him, and he's a competitor, and I like that. He's, and he's, he's a huge part of our run game coordination. Yeah, yeah, we've always used a, 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 what we call a three back, a move tight in, uh, uh, but, but, but then we also have the, the speed guys at the slot. So we're mostly a three wide receiver team. Uh, and then this three back is kind of like the hybrid the NFL's using. They got to be able to put their hand on the ground, get in the backfield, be a running back, be a slot receiver, and then put them. You can put them out wide. So you, you can't sub all the time in the in the in the tempo and in, in run tempo. You have to start a series and stay with the same series. So you know we, we're we're going to be 11 and really 21. We'll play a lot of times with. Uh, you know, you know, we're not going to take Kalen off the field because his ability to receive. So Kalen and Demario are are Nick Ralston, uh, two backs and 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 a three back, and then we'll do some twenty. So. Yeah, I think the thing that's tough about the game is the game is cha the, the pace and the coaching. So to go fast, you have to be really disciplined. So the pace and the coaching's changed the game, but there's so much in space. I mean, and, and, and if you'll watch what great teams, what you have to be able to do now is you'll go out there and watch the Patriots one week and they'll throw for 700 yards and the next week they'll run for, they'll run it every time. So, so you have to take what you can't, you have to take what the defense gives you, but Getting the ball in space, going fast, uh, being disciplined—I think they, they epitomize what 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 we want to be about. Is that you see those receiving core they have? They're so disciplined. They're so uh, they've mastered their craft or their fundamentals, and they're getting the ball in space and they're forcing guys that are you force guys that are box guys out in space covering people. And so that's what's so hard, you know. And it really, in college football, has affected it. I think even more than the NFL. Is there's only, and I know, I know the rosters in the NFL are smaller, but the defensive personnel is so much more versatile, so much more talented, because you know, you, you, you know, you, you you narrow the the talent pool, you know, when you get 32 teams, but you know, you get you know 70, I don't know how Power Five one is 72 or whatever it is, Power Five teams, then it it it, it thins that out, and being able to. You know, you have 40 scholarships on offense, 40 on defense, five on special teams. Man, to get enough guys to, you know, to be able to match up personnel-wise. And, and then from week to week in our league, you know, one week you're playing Stanford, which is completely the opposite of, you know, what you're going to see when you play Washington State or Oregon or any of those guys. So the, the spread is, uh, I, think, I think for a while now, the offense is, it's been, it's very, very difficult. The hardest thing here schematically to do is to play defense in this league. And I think probably the Big 12 would be the same thing. And, you know, I mean, probably not that much different anywhere else, but that's the two that I probably know the most about. Todd, we've written a lot about Blake and Manny, but what would you say about Bryce Perkins, the, you know, his decision to hang around, his, his battle through this mm -hmm. injury, and, and what you're seeing from him now? Yeah, I mean, it, obviously it's tough for him. He's a little frustrated because he can't get out and get reps and compete, but uh, he's still not, you know, been cleared to, for contact. So. Uh, he's doing a great job, working hard, great character kid, working his tail off uh, a winner. But it, it's tough for him. I know he's frustrated because he doesn't get to, uh, um, uh, you know, do any team stuff right now. How did you talk him through that situation last year? 
uh, just like any other any other person, man. Talk to him about being a sun devil and how important it is. And uh, um, you know, uh, I know how all the stuff works. You know, I just I don't I don't uh, um, you know I don't I don't see the quarterback. A lot of people look at that position differently than the other. I don't see that position any differently. Uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, man. I mean. Um, you know, you got to persevere through things. I guess my deal is like, if you ask me, like, what's it like being at this place to this place to this place? And how'd you talk them through all this stuff? I really, if I got to talk you into it, you're in trouble. Um, that 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 that's not the deal. It's it's every place has its own set of problems, and you're going to have to compete at this level to play. And so, uh, at the end of the day, man, it's how bad you want to be a Sun Devil. And and Bryce, you know, his at the end of the day, he want to be a Sun Devil. Coach, what have you thought of Michael Smith Dalton in the spring? He's kind of role that he's, yeah, he's got big shoes to fill. You know, big shoes to fill. He's got to get more consistent, uh, but uh, he's got he's got all the potential in the world. What do you think of the uh, versatility he brings? I guess being able to kick it with both feet. Yeah, yeah, we got to get we're kicking a good one foot first. Yeah, that's what I'd say about that. No, I, I, I you know, I think that's, uh, you know, I know he can do that, but that's not something we're probably going to do a whole lot of. And but uh, I like the fact that he can roll punt. He can do all the things that he does. And but he's just got to, you know, I'm, Matt Hawk is. The best punter that I've ever had. I mean, he's uh, really, I mean, just outstanding and was very consistent for us. And that's real important is that, uh, you know, uh, not getting any, you know, we've been pretty fortunate here. I think we've had, uh, you know, uh, I guess two, yeah, two really good punters. And uh, uh, I think the first year we led the league maybe in, in, in punt return yards or something like that. That's pretty good. I remember that. But, uh, um, uh, you know, he's just got to get he, – he, he's the guy, so he's got to get – he's got to continue to get more consistent. But he's doing a good job. Is that okay? Yes, he did. <laughs> I, I didn't know if that was against the rules for me to say that. Phenomenal. I mean, I mean, one, uh, uh, Coach Patterson was a year older than me, so he got an opportunity at Texas A&I. We actually played them when we were in college. And I think Daryl ran two or three kickoffs and punts back on them. And so uh, – uh, it's about the first time Coach Patterson's caught up with him today, I think. But uh, no, it was it was phenomenal uh, to get uh, very very thankful and appreciative to him coming by here. But here's a guy that played 20 years, All Pro, NFL Hall of Famer, and man, he had one of the best talks that I've I've heard. I mean, just uh, gave our guys the truth today. I thought it was pretty powerful. What'd you think, Blake? You think it's pretty good. Uh, Gene Boyd. Was that right? And he was in town for some other stuff, and uh, 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 I, think, I think it was I think it was Gene Boyd, not Tim Casty. <laughs> but no, it was real. I, you know, one of the things we try to do is give our guys. You know, some of these kids, all of them want to do, but he gave great wisdom on a guy that uh, did it for 20 years, and just how he went, he went back and you know he talked about his faith. He talked about his. Is uh, you know you know your work ethic, your confidence. He talked about you know less talk, more action. He was all. I mean, he, he talked about hey, man. I've seen some of the most talented guys come along, and they weren't there very long because you know it all goes back to man, it, your core values, and, and 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 what is it that you're doing this for, and what's your purpose. So it's pretty good. What differences are you seeing out of Demario from last year? I think he's having a really good spring. We want to keep him lean, uh, you know, and. Uh, uh, healthy, obviously, and I think he's had. I think he's had a really good spring. I think he's good. I think obviously he's doing better. So it's so it's been. Uh, you know, he's a senior. It's his last year. Uh, you know, these guys. Uh, you know, mean something to him, and uh, I think they're pretty motivated. So you can tell that he's uh, he's a guy that's improved this spring.